Hello dear friends, I am Devasis Buraghwai, welcoming you all to my channel Ranger Devasis. Uh, as I have discussed with you earlier that I will be discussing the subject forestry. So from today and onwards I am going to discuss the subject forestry. But before going to much of the detail, I am I was I have decided to pay tribute to all the pioneers, pioneer gentlemen, ladies and the institute who has contributed immensely towards the conservation of in conservation of forest and Indian forestry. So that's why I have taken up this subject in pioneers of Indian forestry. And also, dear friends, from the point of view of examination, uh, many questions used to come from this chapter. So, dear friends, before going to the to this chapter, I am going to tribute to this gentleman. Sir Beatrice Ben Grandis, who, who, who is known as the father of Indian forestry. And in another slide, the, the, there is an institute named as Forest Research Institute Dehradun, which is, who, which is the pioneer of Indian forestry in research and education. Dear friends, if we see the conservation or the forest administration in India, we have to go back to the ancient India, where in 300 BC, uh, Mauryan Samrat uh, Chandragupta Maurya has appointed a superintendent of forest for looking after the forest and wildlife. At that time, forest and wildlife wealth is quite good in, in our country. So, and for protecting the nature and also for maintaining the forest and forest wealth in the country, he has appointed that uh, superintendent, superintendent. His guru, Kautilya, in his Arthasastra written in the Mauryan period, says about the need of forest administration. Also, we know about King Asuka, who, who, is, a, who is also known as the pioneer of Indian so social forestry. So, he gave much importance for plant, planting trees along roadside. We, nowadays, we do roadside plantation, canopy plantation. So, Asuka, Samrat Asuka was the pioneer for uh, planting trees along the uh, non-forestry areas. So, in, if we go back to the medieval India, the Mughals used to look upon the forest as a game reserve for hunting and uh, other purposes. And also, if we go back other, in other periods, like uh, epic period during Mahabharata Ramayana, we have the many stories of Sikar hunting and all these things. So, also in Mughal, not, not only the game reserve, but also they have emphasized on gardening, the, the forestry, forestry in their camp, campuses in the, you know, uh, many monuments, for example, here if we see the uh, of, uh, picture of Taj Mahal, we have seen many trees are planted during the Mughal era only. They also showed interest in plantation on the either side of the avenues. Also, they have uh, they therefore displayed an aesthetic and utilitarian, utilitarian approach to the plants. So, if we go to the come to the modern period, the first eucalyptus plantation was uh, around 1790 by Tipu Sultan in his gar palace garden on Nandi Hills near Bangalore. So, Tipu Sultan was a pioneer Indian king that uh, who has introduced eucalyptus in uh, India because e eucalyptus is an uh, exotic species. He received seeds from Australia and introduced about 16 species. The first conservator of forest was appointed in 1806. It was basically to organize timber supply from the West Coast. See, dear friends, at that time in pre in the initial British period, the forests are used for extraction, timber extraction, extraction for railway sleepers, uh, for construction purpose and many uh, other purposes where we use the for timber and but uh, gradually the exploitation come exploitation thought of exploitation used to use, gradually turning on to the conservation forestry the first tick plantation at nelambur in kerala was raised in 1842 the thing is that at the time actually there are some operation cultural operation used to be there so it's where the timbers are being exploited, extracted from the forest, and also the regeneration is there. So that comes to the that uh, creates the lead to the Indian forestry, whole Indian forestry system. So during the period of Lord Dalhousie, who was the Governor General of India from 1848 to 1856, he has promulgated for the first time an outfit for forest conservation in India via a memorandum of 3rd August uh, 1855, which laid the foundation of the Indian Forest Department. This was the in response to exploitation of forest wealth by Indian contractors, common fox and natural disasters. Later, it became a tool to annex large and sparsely populated lands of India. The lands were declared protected areas and were occupied by foresters, forest fire guards, rangers, foresters and administrators. Very soon, forestry in India became an international profession with eminent specialists mainly from Europe. See the forest conservancy and forest administration was started in during the era of Lord Dalhousie. Later on in the 1864, 
the Imperial Forest Department in India was established, and Sir Dietrich Brandis, who is known as the father of Indian forestry, was appointed as the first Inspector General of Forest to the Government of India. So he's the first Inspector General of Forest to the Government of India, which is, who was appointed in 1864, along with the creation of the Indian Forest Depart Department. So this question used to come in all the examinations where MCQs used to come uh, for the subject of forestry. Who is the first Inspector General of Forest to the in Forest to the Government of India? Who was and when or the, when Sir Dietrich Brandis was appointed as the IGF to the Government of India? So he is also known as the founder of scientific forestry in India. Also, he is, as I have mentioned earlier, that he is the father of Indian forestry. Apart from his other uh, contribution, he has two notable publications: the Forest Flora of Northwest and Central India, 1874. He has published and Indian trees. This uh, Indian trees has been published just after his retirement in 1906. Placement of Indian Forest School at Dehradun in 1877. First Indian Forest Act come into force. In 1878, for the first time, the forests were declassified into reserve and protected forests. In 1927, the Act of the 1878 was consolidated. Now we have Indian Forest Act 1927. In Assam, we uh, applied this Indian uh, Assam Forest Regulation 1891. So, so, dear friends, this information has been collected during my MSc days from uh, from our lectures, from our uh, visit to my NFLIC. I have because I have pursued my uh, MSc in uh, Dehradun, FRI Dehradun. So please watch this video completely because you won't get this uh, such type of information in anywhere like in a, in a single page or in anywhere. So please read this, please watch this video completely. You, otherwise you will be missing some information which is very much important in perspective of um, forest ranger examination or other competitive examinations. Also you need to know this information for the sake of our Indian forest. We have to know about the pioneers. That's why I have made this video. Dear friends. So in 1906, 5th June, Imperial Forest Research Institute was established in Dehradun, which later named as Forest Research Institute Dehradun after colonial period. DC. Board of Forestry was created at national level in 1910. It was chaired by IGF. Indian Forest College was opened on 13th May 1938 at Dehradun, which later became IGNFA, the training for instit training institute for IFS professionals. Well, Yes, dear friends, if you will select, you will be selected as an IFS officer by UPSC. After that, you have to go to IGNF Indira Gandhi National Forest Academy. Dream for many aspirants. So this is the Forest Research Institute Dehradun, my alma mater, where I have pursued my MSc. So it is a pioneer institute of Indian forestry. Many history is there. In in the backdrop, you can see the hills of Masuri, a very, very beautiful landscape. Dear friends, if you did not go to this place, please try to visit once. You will be mesmerized to see its beauty. Coming to the next uh, information, the post of Director of Forest Education was created in the year 1953 to assist the President Forest Research Institute and Colleges. Responsibility for, it has the responsibility for professional and technical training education in the country. In 1986, ICFR Indian Council for Forestry Research and Education in Dehradun was created. It is formed as an umbrella organization for taking care of forestry research education and extension needs of the country. In 1991, the DFE, Directorate of Forest Education, was delinked from the Forest Research Institute and Colleges. Dear friends, Directorate of Forest Education's um, abbreviation is DFE. ICFR stands for Indian Council for Forestry Research and Education. So, dear friends, the, the acronym and abbreviation from these institutes used to come almost every year in all, in all the competitive examinations related to environment and forest. So please be careful and please remember these um, acronyms and abbreviations. And these institutes, director, the Directorate of Forest Education actually helps the training, it promulgates the training uh, for, for ACS and forest range officers and also it uh, ma makes the course curriculum for the range officers and the ACFs who, who are the, the State Forest Service officers here in the syllabus for the, for the trainings. We have three cash process. Initially, the cash process are only meant for ACF, but uh, due to uh, some reasons, nowadays both ACF and RFOs are being trained in, in this cash process. First cash process was Barnihat, which is established in 1976, after that, Coimbatore 1980, after that, Dehradun 1981. Uh, these are known as cash process, Central Academy for State Forest Services. Please remember this acronym and abbreviation. So, dear friends, we have nine colleges for training of, of rainforest officers. 
so these are the central academy for of, of forest education or cafe Kursium or efrc Kursium. then we have forest training institute and research ranger college sundarnagar himachal pradesh gujarat forest ranger college rajpipla gujarat forest karnataka state forest academy gungarvatti uh, then Harvard, Karnataka, the Kundal Academy of Development, Administration and Management, Forest, Sangli, Maharashtra. Uh, I was trained over there and along with my other uh, 16 batchmates from Assam. Uh, Odisha Forest Rangers College, Angul. Then Tamil Nadu Forest Academy, Coimbatore, Telangana State Forest Academy, Hyderabad, Uttarakhand Forest Training Academy, Halwani. So, dear friends, uh, if, if you will be selected as a range forest officer from Assam, APA, from APSC, so just after the um, after passing out you need to go to this academy for 18 months of induction training prepare well prepare very well so that you will be getting trained in these academies and initially some of these academies are uh, meant for training of imparting trainings uh, trainings for forest guards foresters and other subordinate staff but nowadays they, these training academies only conduct the trainings for range forest officers only these nine oh. as a whole total 12 academies are there three caspers and other nine academies for range forest officers so coming to the constitutional provisions related to Indian forestry, in 1977, Article 48A to the Constitution was added in DPSP, Directive Principle of State Policy, that it, which stated that the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country. Being, dear friends, see, we love wildlife, we love animal, but also our constitution make us to love animal, make us to love wildlife and to protect environment by this DPSP and the fundamental duty. Article 51 AG of the Indian Constitution clearly mentions the fundamental duty, that is the duty of the citizen to protect environment. Dear friends, we know the fundamental right, but alongside we do also need to know the fundamental duty towards the nation, towards the state. So please keep these things in mind. So and also from the point of view of examination, this article, these two articles are very important. Please remember it. About the MOEFTC, in 1977, wildlife and forest transferred from state list to concurrent list of the constitution, which gives the central government the power to overrule state's decision on that matter. And also, in such political and constitutional changes prepared the groundwork for the creation of a federal department of environment in 1980, which turned into the MOEF or Ministry of Environment and Forest in 1985. In May 2014, for prioritizing the climate change scenario, the ministry was renamed to the current title of MOEFCC. So please keep these years in your mind. And also, question is to come the subject matter of forest and wildlife comes in which list, list of the constitution. There, there, will, there will be three lists, state list, uh, central list and concurrent list. We have to, you have to choose the answer at the concurrent list. We have three forest policies of India. First forest policy was uh, came into force in 1894 with mainly emphasis on diverting the forest land to agricultural purpose. Initially, the commercial purpose was there. Gradually, the purpose of protection of the forest by, you know, in 1952 second forest policy, there, there is provision that checking soil erosion and contemporary land use. These are the two clause where, uh, you know, this protection measures, protection thought comes into force in 1988 forest policy completely the protection of the environment and forest ensures the environmental stability and maintenance of ecological balance there is no commercial things were emphasized in this third forest policy of india coming to the another institute which is called forest survey of india which is established on first july 1981 in head with headquarters responsibility for of this institute is to assess and monitor the forest resource of the country regularly in addition it also engages the providing service of training research and extension and education to farmers to civil society to forest officers in different areas different sectors a notable contribution of this fsi is that it publishes the india's state of forest report in two years into we are recently this ISFR 2021 has been published and from that only we know, we got get to know that forest cover of india forest cover of the state moderately dense forest uh, scrap forest how the amount and all these things forest of india is also uh, abbreviated as fsi 
So dear friends, with this and this, I am hopeful that we can work together for the pristine forest wealth of the, of the nation by with due respect to our uh, pioneers of Indian forestry and the pioneer institutes of Indian forestry so that we can continue this legacy for protecting the forest wealth of the nation. With this, dear friends, I'll end up end today's video. And if you have uh, liked uh, this video, please do let me know. And also, if there is improvement in this video, also do let me know. And we are hopeful that we will be meeting in my next video with another uh, topic of forestry and also the discussion of the question paper of previous year. So till then, dear friends, take good care of your health and uh, prepare well. Jai Hind.